Well, hello 1P, and welcome to the first lesson of your last unit. We're going to talk about measurement today, and hopefully this is not anything new to you. You should have encountered uh, perimeter and area previously to this, and this will all be a review. And incidentally, you do not have to memorize any formulas. You can see that here. You don't need to memorize formulas. They're all on the page you will be given, and if you've lost that page, it's linked to on my website. Here's what it looks like. Um, this is the formula sheet that EQAO uses. Uh, it's slightly different because EQAO gives it to you on a front and a back and I've reformatted it so that it's all on one page but this is the way it looks for EQAO and has looked for quite a number of years. So this is the formula page that I want you to use so that you get used to it when EQAO rolls around. And our goal today we're going to use those formulas to find the area and the perimeter of simple geometric shapes. And by simple geometric shapes I mean uh, rectangle, parallelogram, triangle, trapezoid, circle, and we're going to discuss what all of these uh, formulas mean and how to use them when we get to them. Okay, so we're going to start with the easiest one of them all, the rectangle. Let's find the area and the perimeter of the rectangle. So how do we find the area of a rectangle? Area is sometimes easier than perimeter. Uh, we have to remember what area and perimeter mean. So if I'm going to find the area, that means that I want to know how much space it takes up. So it's two-dimensionalness, uh, if you will. So all that stuff that I colored in there, that is the area. If I'm trying to find the perimeter, perimeter means the distance around. So it's just a straight line. I just have to go all the way around the object and figure out that if I took a string, how could I go all the way around the perimeter of the object? Okay. So we're going to start with area. An area for a rectangle, um, we take the two dimensions and we multiply them together. So we take length times width. And I'm just going to write LW when there's nothing between them, that means multiply. So in this case, it's going to be 8.5 times 6. And 8.5 times 6, 8.5 times 6, if you want to plug it in, is 51. Now remember that area is a two-dimensional unit. And our unit in this case was feet, but since we've gone from a straight line measurement along the edge to needing a second dimension to have that space, we have to say that second dimension is there, and so I use a squared on there, so this is square feet. Now we're going to look at perimeter. Now perimeter is the distance around, and you can always look at perimeter um, no matter what shape it is, whether it's a nice shape like a rectangle or whether it is um, a really odd shape, the perimeter you can just add all sides. So if you don't remember any fancy formulas, you can add all sides. However, there is a formula for perimeter of a rectangle, and that is we can take the two lengths and add the two widths, or we can add a length and then a width and then multiply it by two because there's two of each of them. So we're going to do that version of it. We're going to take, say that perimeter equals the length plus the width. That gets us halfway around and to get the rest of the way I just multiply that by two so that gives me the whole way around. So the length plus the width here I've got 8.5 and I'm going to add 6 to it. So we have 8.5 plus 6 and 8.5 plus 6 is 14.5 and so 2 times 14.5 is 29. Now this is still just a straight line distance. I'm just going here to here. I haven't changed dimension. I'm not looking at the space that it's occupying. It's just a straight line distance all the way around. So its units are still in feet. The perimeter is just a one-dimensional um, measurement. Okay, so that's how you find the perimeter and area of a rectangle. Now we're going to take a look at a circle. A circle is a little bit harder because, uh, well, a circle only has one side and really the only thing that you can measure in a circle is how wide it is. Uh, and in this case I've given you the radius. The radius is halfway across, so this is the radius. If I gave you the diameter, the diameter would be all the way from one side to the other. So um, we know that the diameter 
is the same as two radiuses because from the circle, from the center of the circle out, and it doesn't matter where I draw it, from the center of the circle out, it's always the same distance. It's always one radius. So if I draw another radius across here so that it goes all the way across the entire circle, I get the diameter. Well, the diameter is just two radii. Okay, so we actually need the formula for the circle. I hope some of you remember these things. So where's our circle? Here's a circle down here and it gives you these things here. It tells you that you've got the diameter and it tells you what the radius is. So it's marked on this diagram so you remember uh, what they are. Um, but circumference, that's what the C stands for, is circumference. That's a fancy name for the perimeter of a circle. Notice it's in this column. This column says perimeter. So this is for the perimeter. So we've got actually got two different ways to measure the perimeter. We got circumference equals pi times diameter or circumference equals 2 pi r. So if you're given diameter, you can use this one. If you're given radius, you can use this one. And since we're given radius, we're going to use 2 pi r. So circumference equals 2 pi r. 2 pi, and remember what pi is. Uh, pi is that nasty little number that's approximately 3.14. Approximately. It doesn't stop at 3.14. It keeps going on forever and forever. Uh, 3.14159 is out to, um, to 5 digits. Um, and the radius here is 4. So when we type this into our calculator, we're going to use pi, and I'd like you to use pi to at least 3.14159. But your calculator, if you have a scientific calculator, and you should get one, will likely have a pi button on it. So you can just type in 2 times pi. And see, it has a whole lot of digits there, 3.14159265335895, blah, 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 blah. Um, the thing is, you don't have to memorize that. You can, it's stored in the calculator. So we did 2 times pi, and now we have to times that by 4. And our answer is 25.13, and we're going to end it there. So we're going to just round it. So if I'm going to round it to two decimal places, I have to look at the third and see that it's a 2. And so this is just going to stay a 3. If this were 5 or greater, I would bump that to a 4. So 25.13. 25.13. Now this is a diameter, remember. This is, or sorry, this is a circumference. It just means the distance around. And the distance around can be measured by a string. So since the distance around can be measured by a string, it's just a straight line measurement. And this was given to us in inches, so our answer is in inches as well. Now we're going to do area. And the area of a circle, if we look back over on these, this here, area is pi r squared. So area is pi r squared. If you're given diameter, you'd have to cut it in half before you sub it in for radius. Um, in this case, radius is 4, and I have to square it. Now remember, squaring does not mean timesing by 2. 4 squared is not 8. And I'm going to actually write that out. 4 squared is not 8. 4 squared means 4 times 4, not 4 times 2. So 4 times 4 is 16, so what I have to do is take pi and times it by 16. So let's grab my calculator, and I'm going to go 16 times pi. Now why did I type it in that way? This says pi times 16, and I did 16 times pi. Well, that's because it actually doesn't matter which way you multiply. You're going to get the same answer either way. So this is 50.26. If we leave it out to two decimal places like we did um, for the other one, I have to stop it at that 6 and then I look at the next one and since it's a 5, this 6 is going to have to round to 7. So 50.27. 50.27. Now this is a measurement of how much is inside. So I need two dimensions to cover it. So this is going to be in square inches. Okay. Next we have a triangle. A triangle for the perimeter, the perimeter is easy. In this case we're just going to say add all sides. 
Now notice that I've got four measurements here. I have three sides and then I have this dotted line up the middle. The dotted line up the middle is called the height of the triangle because it meets this side at a 90 degree angle. Um, it is not part of the perimeter. We do not add that in. It is not part of going around the triangle. If I started here and I wanted to go all the way around the triangle, I would not cut across it up the middle. So we, when we're adding all sides, we do not include that height measurement. So add all sides is 7.1 plus 9.9 plus 6.3. And that answer is actually 23.3. And since this is a straight line distance and it's measured in YD, YD stands for yards. Um, we're not used to seeing that. Most of our stuff is measured in meters, but this one is measured in yards. So we just do YD for yards, 23.3 yards. Now, the area of a triangle, let's pull up our sheet again. The area of a triangle says that it is base times height divided by 2. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you why that's the case. Um, any triangle that I can draw, if I draw these things out this way, okay, um, I end up with a rectangle. And so if I have the base and the height of the triangle, or I can, can fill it in um, a different way, if I have this triangle like this, and I have the height there, I can fill in this other stuff here, which is going to be the same amount of the triangle. Oh, you can't see it as well there anyway. But anyway, it turns out it's a rectangle, and then I just have to divide it in half to get the triangle. So area equals the base times the height divided by 2. Now you have to know what base and height mean. The base of the triangle and the height of the triangle always meet at 90 degrees. So in this diagram, this must be the base and this must be the height because okay, they always meet at a 90 degree angle. This is not a height because it's not meeting anything at a 90 degree angle. So we've got our base and our height there. So we're going to write in the base is 9.9, .9, the height is 4.5, and then you have to divide that by 2. And that turns out to be 22.28, and again, since this is area, our units are going to be yard with a squared on it because area tells us two dimensions. It tells us what's being filled in there. And our last simple um, shape is the parallelogram. Now the parallelogram, it has two sides here that are the same and two sides here that are the same. So to find the perimeter of the parallelogram, we can do exactly the same thing as we did with a rectangle. Um, it is 2 times the side 1 plus side 2. Now we don't always call it, we don't really call it base and height because in a parallelogram the height is this, the same as in a triangle. It The height meets one of the sides at a 90 degree angle. So we're only going to, we're going to call this side 1 and side 2. Now if I add side 1 and I add side 2, that gets me halfway around the parallelogram and then I just double it to get the rest of the way. So 2 times 7 plus 11 and 7 plus 11 is 18 so we have to do 2 times 18 which is 36 and this is measured in kilometers and perimeter is a straight line distance so we don't have to put a squared on it or anything. Now to find the area of a parallelogram, go over here, the area of a parallelogram um, is the base times the height, but I told you before that the height is the distance between two of the parallel sides. So um, when we do base times height here, it's going to be 11, but it's not times 7 because 7 is not a height. The height has to meet it at a right angle. That's why we've put this little right angle in here so that I know the distance in between here is 5. Even though it's not measured in there, This is those are parallel, so that's going to be the same all the way along. So it has to be 11 times 5, which gives us 55 kilometers, and since it's area, it's going to be square kilometers. Now this last example that I have here just is written out in words. So it says if the area of a triangle with a base of 7.5 is 88.5 centimeters squared, what is the height? So this says that 
I have a triangle and you should always draw it out. You should draw out a triangle. So what I have here is a triangle and I've got a base, so that's this distance over here, is 7.5 centimeters. And it tells me that I need to find the height because that's what it says. It says, what is the height? So the only other piece of information I'm given is that the area is 88.5 centimeters squared. Okay, so I know that the area of a triangle equals base times height divided by 2. Um, so this 88.5 has to have been the base, which was 7.5, times the height divided by 2. Well, let's get rid of this divided by 2 first, because I know that this answer has been divided by 2. So let's times it by 2, and we get uh, 88.5, 88 88.5 times 2 is 177. So I've got 177 is going to equal 7.5 times h. Well, if I want to know what h is, I have to reverse this multiplication. Because um, I know 7.5 times h gives me 177. So in order to figure out what that h is, I'm going to have to reverse my multiplication. And when you reverse multiplication, you're getting division. The other thing is we can think of it as our algebra skills and say, okay, well, if I divide this side by 7.5, those go away. 7.5 divided by 7.5 is gone. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do the same thing to the other. Hopefully you remember me saying that over and over and over again. Um, so then I have to get that, and let's bring the calculator back, 177 divided by 7.5 is 23.6. So this says 23.6 equals, and this, this was 1h, but we're just going to write it as an h. Uh, and what are our units of measure here? Uh, well, height is always a straight line distance, and since this was given in centimeters and this was given in square centimeters, this is going to be 23.6 centimeters. And that brings us to the end of this lesson.